um, maybe scholarships out there in case you want to go back to college. Uh, yeah, right. Well, in Italy, that. you actually get a government stipend if you what? have celiac disease. Oh, you were living in the wrong country. I'm sorry. I know. I'm like, damn. I'm like, that's why I'm trying to like get our distribution out of the country, uh, out of the United States, because I, get it. I think there's some places that we would probably like do like just as well, if not better than we do. I mean, you know, California is interesting, right? Because a lot yeah. of people think, oh, yeah, you're probably doing really well because of all the fad dieters. And I was like, if we were yeah, doing well because yeah. of the fad dieters, I would have done really well than, than nothing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You do really well, yeah, and then nothing, and then really well, and then nothing. Like your peaks and valleys would be drastic, right? Like I, I, I will say though that I do sell more than the average brewery during the month of January because oh. people were like, "Well, I'm not going to give up alcohol, but I guess I'll give up gluten, so I'll drink this beer wow. that doesn't have gluten in it to make myself feel better." That's hilarious. Normally, that is the uh, the worst month for everybody, but you guys through the roof. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes i mean you know it's certain stores right like right of course yeah. you know i think one of the things that's really interesting is that when you start working with chains sometimes there's a regional buyer sometimes yeah. there's a whole state buyer and then there's some chains that you work with where it's store to store mm -hmm. and so like like say with the brand bevmo which you might be in your area as gopuff i'm not sure oh um, yeah gopuff is uh starting to become more of a thing here yes yeah, so that's a, that's one of the brands that we're actually trying to go out of state with because of uh, nice. how well how well curated it is. But I think that there is also this element where I'd probably want corporate buying our product because then you'd have to have such a massive sales force to manage the 39 states that GoPuff is operating in. Yeah. Uh, right, which I'm totally willing to do, right? I think that it just, you know, there is that element where the personality comes down to it. Like I've got like over 150 different relationships with def different stores that are constantly rotating in California because they're moving buyers around to improve stores that are underperforming. And so mm -hmm. that buyer that you love, you're like, hey, wait, why did that store fall off? And you call and they're like, oh, they're not working here anymore. Okay, yeah. cool, hi, I'm Robert from Divine Science. This is our first time meeting you. Oh, it's the first time you're hearing about us. Oh yeah, well, we're a gluten-free beer brand, yep. blah, blah, blah. And you're like, wow, I'm going right back into this, starting off from scratch, here we go. Yep. Um, but then all of a sudden this store that had like never bought you before, like orders like 15 cases because that buyer that loved you from the previous store is like, oh yeah, wait, why don't they have them here? One sec, I'll fix that, yeah. right? <laughs> so it's this really interesting, like amorphous, you know, thing that we've, that we build our livelihoods on, right? And I think that's one of the things that, that a lot of people don't understand. You know, as an, as an outsider, you walk into like a Total Wine and More and you go, wow, this thing is beautiful. I have never seen this level of a spectacle. And maybe y'all have an even more special store, but like for us in terms of chains, that's pretty high caliber, right? right. And even then, a lot of people are like, oh, well, I got to go look that up or, you know, like, because... It's such a massive store. They've got like oh, thousands nice. of different just whiskeys, yep. right? Like they don't know if they've got it on hand, but there's not some magic person in their ear, you know, who's like listening to every conversation, typing in and going, oh yes, direct this customer on aisle 12 to uh -huh. aisle 14 for their desired product. No, these are human beings <laughs> that are rolling with the punches themselves. And, you know, maybe they've got a good boss. Maybe they've got a boss that's a little bit more overbearing, right? Like, these are human beings, right? And so I think that's one of the things that I've really learned is that element of um, that every person deserves grace and every person is better than their worst deed to you. I promise you that. I like um, that. I like that thought process. You know, and they, because everybody is fighting a battle that you are completely unaware of. Yes. Right? Like w uh, w once the GoPuff merger happened, there was a lot of people that had been long-term BevMo employees that um, basically got the shaft. Mm -hmm. And they left, you know what I mean? And, and it, I walked into stores where it looked like Chernobyl, man, that open boxes on the floor, nothing on the shelves, racks. It looked like the dollar general, man. Like it was scary <laughs> in there. And, and it was because like, yeah, they had just fired the, the lead manager and then the person under them quit at a protest. And now you've got two people who have never even been trained on their system, which is a DOS system, by the way, that works off of F3 and F4 <laughs> and F5 commands that they're just like, I don't know what this is. Why can't I just point and click? Um, and yeah, like, honestly, like my respect for those people that work for those brands that have to deal with those kinds of situations is never, never larger than it's ever been, right? Like yeah. I, my respect for them grows daily, right? These people are doing it basically an impossible job in an era where people are impossible, right? Like customers come in and will 
literally bitch out a manager for letting our beer run out of stock on their shelves. And I'm like, I'm sorry you had to deal with that, man. Like, I, I mean, I, 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 want to know, I want you to know that I'm here to support you. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I know you are dealing with this on the front lines. I know it's tough to get an order out here. Why don't you bump it up? So we don't run out kind of thing. Like, and, and you know, there's, they're seeing my upsell as a, wow, this guy's got my back. Right. And it's about partnership because it's, that's what it's all about. Right. But yeah. like you watch a big brand, like an ABI go, yeah, we're going to bring these 3,200 cases in here right now. Um, and you have to just accept it. Yep. Right. So I think that's the cool thing about being a little bit smaller is that you do really build that relationship. Right. Like I got people that like, uh, one of the guys at one of the stores, he used to work at Lafayette, but now he works over in Orinda. Great guy. Um, like he'll step outside and have a cigarette while we're talking, like, just to have a conversation with me because that's how many times I've seen this guy over the last three, four years. That's amazing. Yeah. That, I mean, that's a, the best and sometimes the worst thing, like you said about being such a small quote unquote, small uh, person. And when it comes in that, in the whole grand scheme of things is that like you get to build those relationships. And like you said, if you just go outside and just have a conversation with the person, like at the end of the day, we're all people and it doesn't matter. Like, they can't control as much as they can't control. Like we talked about earlier, like you can only control as much as you can control. And so if they are, like you said, if they're somebody that had either just started that position because somebody had just left that position to go somewhere else so they can build up somewhere else, they're trying to pick up the pieces or trying to figure out exactly what they're trying to do there. So they might let somebody like you, unfortunately, kind of you know filter out until you actually come in again. And you're like, man, I had no idea. Like I just ran the numbers. You guys fucking killed it in here. And so there's no reason why we shouldn't have you on the shelf. Let's pack you guys out. But then there might be somebody else who's like, yeah, your numbers weren't great here, but you know, we'll still take a couple cases or whatever, but like, it's just yeah. all about building those connections. And you never know, like you, like we were talking about, you never know when someone's going to get moved somewhere else to where you're in an account that you were never in before. And all of a sudden you, like you were talking about, maybe you have an end cap or maybe you have a giant display or whatever. Yeah. And people are like, Holy shit. I never even heard of this brewery before. What is this? Yeah, no, they will put you on. I think that's one of the cool things is that like I was in, I was like merchandising a shelf, like on another shelf, like the single section. And I heard through the, the shelves at a store where he's like, Oh yeah, yeah. This is like the tier one, you know, like this is like the macro version. And then it, this one's like an import, you know, they're, they're pretty good. If you want to step it up, I'd look at like brands like Divine Science and you mentioned one or two others and you're like, wow, thank you. Like, yeah. <laughs> wow, I really not even, I, I don't even want to say it better myself. I'll leave that to you. Yeah. You're amazing. I love that. Right. Amazing. And that's the, I think the cool thing that, you know, as the, like, you know, basically it's a one in four diagnosis right now. Like you have a, almost a one in four chance if you go to the doctor for something like this, right. It, they're probably gonna take something away. Right. Yeah. It's going to be like peanuts or it's going to be lactose or it's going to be this or it's going to be gluten or that or the other um a lot of people for right a lot of people right now it's nightshades right so that's where like tomatoes fall into uh, uh i mean white white potatoes are nightshades right uh chilies are nightshades right and i'm like no you can never take my chilies away seriously i, will, I want that spicy stuff baby i will forsake potatoes and tomatoes i will give up french fries i was and gonna ketchup. say do i have to get french Just fries have hot sauce. That's right a Oh, I don't want to get into that world. I don't want to. No, I mean, that's another conversation entirely, but yeah. I'm just saying, you know what I mean? Like, that's the same thing with beer. It's like, I've had friends that have had to completely give up alcohol and gluten. And I'm like, dude, I feel so bad for you right now. <laughs> right? It's like, I, I'm, I mean, I'll, I'll like, at least if I can have just one beer a day, please. Right. Right. You know, give me the same that was allotted to an Egyptian pyramid worker. I will be happy. <laughs> please right like and that's one of the things that's kind of cool is that like in order to actually look at the future of gluten-free beer we've actually had to look further into the past of brewing right because when you look at the barley centric viewpoint that came from colonialism right that came from imperialism that came from a, a sun never setting on a british flag right yeah we talk about the india pale ale making it to india but what was the best-selling beer in india the porter mm-hmm it was right? the yeah common man's uh, dark beer. 
Exactly. So I, mean, I think that when you look at it, it wasn't the native, whatever they were making beer from, probably millet and rice in India before. Um, you know, there's, there's sub-Saharan beers that go all the way back to the Bronze Era, right? Mm -hmm. That's potentially longer than barley's ever even been cultivated. Yeah. Right? So like there, there's this beer that I, I call it Umkomboti, which is the name in South Africa. But basically, if you go to Africa, every town has their own name for beer. Essentially, there's uh, Pivo and Pombe and Omolovu, Umkomboti, like all these different, um, you know, names for basically the same thing. It's usually a fermented sorghum or millet beer. Sometimes they add corn, sometimes they don't. Yeah. Um, but that, that predates basically almost all of our understanding of beer, unless you get into Mayan and Incan cultures with um, blue corn chicha or the Aztecan pulque, which is an agave beer or tepache, pineapple beer, right? So um, th those like exceedingly predate barley, right? So mm. just bar barley, e barley's even cultivation is what I mean to say, right? Like these are things that came around before like the Fertile Crescent was pumping out wheat. Jeez. So that's, I think one of the things that's kind of cool is it kind of, it always makes me think of the Winston Churchill quote. He's like, if one wishes to know the future, one must simply look further into the past. Um, ah. and, and that's kind of the way that I feel about gluten-free beer is it really hasn't even hit its stride yet, right? Like, I think there are some brands that are doing some really kick-ass stuff and really pushing the envelope and are in multi-state distribution scenarios. Um, but I still don't even think we've got, we've even scratched the surface on what this could could really you know become. Yeah, maybe it's just one 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 um, one draft on a draft list. That's a big deal though, right? Because remember, Huge it used, deal. To, it used to basically not exist. Yeah, right. So you know, we're really we're 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 really lucky that we're in SoCal where we are affiliated, or we just get reached out to by basically the newest SoCal gluten free restaurant that opens up. Goes, oh hey, you guys are local. We want to carry your beer. Right. That's it's like awesome. sometimes that easy, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, but also it's like a limited spot, right? Like you're like, oh, okay, they've got three drafts, right? But hey, I've got my beer on all three of those drafts. Exactly. So I think that's something that's kind of cool, but there is some there is some other like darker side of this, right? Where like you'll see brands like Stone Distribution buy a five tap kegerator for a bar and mm -hmm. then they have all the beers inside and you're like, that is not legal. <laughs> But the crazy part is, I think I heard something recently that like the the TTB is aware of 160,000 violations currently, and you're like, well, that seems like more than you could get to. That and I'm like, yeah, lot. it is more than you could get to. <laughs> That's and well, then you also have to think about the backwards math. Like, well, how much are they going to check it out because uh, well, and they how much actually the care? Taxpayers' dollars are they going to burn in hotel yes. stays and gas? And yeah going and actually spending the time to review all of these supposed yep. violations that could be just from a comp competing brewery that wants to see their rival go down, right? Like, it's one of the reasons why we had the security and exchange, um, the, the securities issue in like 2008 with the, the subprime and the Bernie Madoff thing is that people kept trying to come out and say, hey, like, this is bonkers. You can't do this. You can't do this. You can't do this. Um, <laughs> And then people are like, well, yeah, but you, 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 you don't work for them, right? It's not like you're a whistleblower. You're just, yeah. you're just a competing firm, right? And they're like, oh, well, I'm, I'm still right. And then they were proven right. But so we had to go through that whole BS. Even when we had people saying, hey, you know, like, don't do it like this. Or, hey, I'm going to bet against you. And, like, you're going to lose a shit ton of money. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, no, I mean, it is one of the things that's really interesting about America. And that's what radical individualism looks like in, in, in practice. You're, yeah, you're 100% right there. Now, so. Robert, I've had so much fun having this conversation. If people want to find you guys online, visit the brewery, uh, get your beer, uh, how can they do all the things? Yeah, divinesciencebrewing.com. I would say the best way, if you are like in the SoCal area, is to follow us on Instagram because that's the thing that we update constantly. So yeah, divinesciencebrewing.com has a, a beer locator on there. So you'll see like the various BevMos, Total Wines, uh, Albertsons, Vons of Pavilions in SoCal that we're in, as well as like some select restaurants and liquor stores. Um, the Instagram is where like you can see all the new beers that we're releasing. From, we, we're actually currently partaking in the um, Black is Beautiful 2 project. So basically a dollar from every pint is going to be donated to um, the NB2A. I mean, it's a small batch, it's only 15 gallons, but we wanted to participate in it any way we can just because 
um, you know, when you look at the history of our space, which is gluten-free brewing, black brewers were the first brewers in the world, but the first brewers to brew our kind of beer.